eggs, milk, fish several times a week for parents who do not eat those foods, who don't have them in the house. I have been asked quite a lot, especially recently, about food allergies and vegan kids. You can probably guess why looking at this list of the top eight most common food allergens, the ones that make up about 90% of allergic reactions. Several of these clearly are not vegan, so What's a vegan parent to do? What did I do with my now six-year-old and three-year-old? What will I do with my three-month-old who will be eating food pretty soon? The numbers vary, but the worst one I found, the worst stat said 11% or almost 11%, more than 26 million American adults have food allergies. Close to half of these developed during adulthood and more than half have experienced a severe reaction. Similar estimate for kids, 8%, and more than 40% of those have ended up in the emergency room. Peanut, tree nut, shellfish, and finned fish tend to be more severe and people are less likely to outgrow them. Children are less likely to outgrow grow them. You can see that represented here with this study on U.S. adults. For example, only about 25% of children will outgrow a peanut allergy. On the other hand, a child has a pretty good chance of outgrowing a milk or egg allergy. It's speculated this is because most kids, including most kids with allergies, allergies to milk and egg, continue to be exposed to milk and egg. As we vegans are all too aware, many, most baked goods have milk and or egg in them, and being exposed to tiny amounts of allergenic foods may help those with allergies build up a tolerance and slowly outgrow them. But what about prevention? If tiny amounts of allergenic foods over a period of time can help with building up a tolerance, maybe the same approach could help with preventing allergies altogether. For peanuts, that definitely seems to be true. Several years ago, the guidance changed from peanut avoidance for children to gradual peanut introduction as early as four months. So once your baby starts eating, you should start giving them peanuts. That's because research has shown that little kids eating peanuts have a much lower chance of developing a peanut allergy. There's less research on other foods, but there is some. This study found an increased risk for egg allergy with later introduction and a decreased risk for those introduced to egg at four to six months. This one found a much lower risk for babies with eczema, and this one had similar results, but for fish. Obviously, this doesn't guarantee that you will prevent your child from developing an allergy, but it definitely makes sense that early and frequent exposure to allergenic foods would decrease the risk, especially for high-risk babies. Frequent, I think, is really the big issue here, at least for me. I mean, it would be one thing if you just gave your kid an egg or a piece of egg or a little sip of milk one time, but that's not how it works. You've got to do it two to three times a week, starting at about four to six months until about a year. Vegan opinion on what to do about all of this is kind of all over the place. Registered dietitian Carla Moreno-Brice from vegankidsnutrition.com basically says you do you and talk to your kid's pediatrician, but she's clearly leaning toward not giving your kids animal-derived allergens, and she did not give them to her own children. It's not uncommon for children in Asia to have a food allergy to chestnuts. This is a food that is widely found in their diet. However, that doesn't mean that chestnuts should be introduced early and often to children who live in other countries where this food is not consumed by the family. It doesn't make sense for me to introduce chestnuts as a way to prevent an allergy when this food is not regularly part of our diet. Kind of a weird argument. I mean, we're not talking about chestnuts or some other uncommon food. We're talking about foods that are found everywhere milk and eggs. The concern, number one, is accidental exposure. The more common a food, the more likely this can occur. And two, we don't really know what our kids will eat once they get out of the house, and we don't know if they'll stay vegan once they get older. That's the argument vegan dietitian Lauren Penoff makes for introducing these allergens for her own kids who had mild eczema during infancy. She seems to imply the process is pretty easy. Regular exposure to allergens generally means several times a week. This doesn't need to be huge amounts of food. For instance, it could be part of a scrambled egg, a small serving of a muffin made with eggs and milk, a few bites of salmon, a few teaspoons of dairy yogurt, etc. No, it's not a lot of food at any given time, but it, it is a lot of food overall. Eggs, milk, fish, several times a week for parents who do not eat those foods, who don't have them in the house, it's a lot. And for those of us who do this for ethical reasons, for animal welfare reasons, it's really depressing. Cooking egg, cooking fish two to three times a week for months, 
But Lauren is not the only vegan who makes this argument. Vegan dietitians Whitney English and Alexandra Caspero say the same thing in their excellent book, The Plant-Based Baby and Toddler, and they did give these foods to their own kids as well. As for me, I can understand both sides. While I certainly don't agree that a decision is best purely because it's in line with one's own culture or their family situation, I do agree that upending one's food environment just for a reduced risk in something that is typically easily managed is a big ask. And while I certainly don't think this is minimal at all, I do understand parents with high-risk kids doing what they can to minimize allergy development. For my kids, I personally did not worry about allergy development other than peanut. It's very common, it's more likely to be severe, and again, probably lifelong. Plus, it's a very important source of protein and fat for vegans, so we definitely did give our two older kids watered-down peanut butter from very early on, and we'll do the same for final baby very soon. But egg, milk, fish, no. Unlike, say, vaccines, there's just far less benefit here and far more inconvenience and sadness. And yuck factor, if I'm being honest. Eggs, fish are disgusting. Even if we weren't vegan, there's no way in hell I would be scrambling eggs three times a week. And remember, there aren't any guidelines for milk or egg or anything other than for peanut introduction, and these guidelines only apply to kids at moderate to high risk. For low-risk kids, you can introduce them early if you want, but it's really up to you. Which makes sense, again, even for peanut allergy, the risk of a life-threatening, the risk of a severe allergy is very low. My pediatrician, who was very concerned when we first met about my, well, just one kid at the time, my first kid, being vegan, he's never brought up allergens to us. And I do find the concern toward vegans specifically kind of weird. I mean, it's not like non-vegan families are regularly eating all of these foods. How many American kids are regularly eating tree nuts two to three times per week? How many pediatricians are insisting parents give their kids almonds and walnuts on a regular basis? I wish I had a more definitive answer here, but not everything has a definitive answer, even for vaccines. Can you believe I'm saying that? For my older kids, while we have definitely vaccinated them for flu and COVID, I really don't think it's a huge deal if parents don't. Severe outcomes for children from either COVID or the flu is just so unlikely. On the other hand, I rarely put my kids in a car, and when we do drive, it's almost never on the highway. We're usually going max 35 miles per hour. We are very fortunate to have that option, and I love it. Cars are far more dangerous than COVID or the flu or allergies. And the anti-vegans in the room are gonna clutch their pearls at this, but I just don't think a reduced risk for food allergies justifies this. Certainly not for my kids who are low risk. I do want to briefly mention this pre-made oatmeal that has egg and milk. I saw this on Instagram, of course. My ads are either vegan food or baby shit. Anyway, it's specifically for allergy introduction, and it may be a more palatable option for vegan parents who do want to introduce milk and egg since it's just a powder you mix into food. It's super expensive at $39.99 a month, but that's if you give it to them every day, which of course they're recommending. <laughs> Two to three times per week is a lot more reasonable. If you're interested in that approach, I would definitely talk to your doctor and see what they say. Now, if you have backyard hens and that's where you're getting eggs, I don't think you have anything to worry about from an ethical standpoint. Even if you're getting the eggs and paying for them from someone else's backyard hens, that is certainly better than supporting this or some bullshit free range farm. But there's not really an ethical option for milk and certainly not for fish. So if you're going to feed these foods to your kids or to your pets or to yourself, really anybody, please consider offsetting. It just means trying to offset the damage you're doing by donating money to effective charities. If it were me, I would keep track of what I spend and give the equivalent amount to something like Phonolytics. 
Of course, I would be remiss not to mention cultured foods, clean meat, clean egg, clean milk, whatever you want to call it. There are some very, very smart people out there doing their darndest to make animal products without the cruelty. I have tried several of these here on my channel. My kids have all tried them as well. Brave Robot, of course, my favorite vegan ice cream. It is animal friendly ice cream made with perfect day whey. Those cool macarons using the every egg protein. I've also got more Perfect Day Whey in just a whey protein powder that I am putting off trying because it has stevia. <laughs> Fuck. This sector is growing and it's only a matter of time before these products and more, more animal friendly products are available in regular grocery stores. I mean, you can already buy Brave Robot at Kroger. Point is, once we have cruelty free counterparts, once we have animal friendly egg, and milk and fish on the market, then none of this will matter. Ethically speaking, there's still those of us who are not going to feed fucking salmon. Oh God. I can't even imagine that smell in my house several times a week. Even if I'm not cooking it, like you buy, like, I don't know. How do you buy salmon? I don't think I've ever even had salmon in my life. I know what it smells like. Even milk. Milk is straight vomit. I remember my brother always having so much milk. Big glass of milk with dinner. It just leaves such a musty, like, barf flavor <laughs> in your throat. <laughs> I would love a study on long-term vegans and our, like, food preferences before going vegan because I would not at all be surprised if those of us who have been vegan for... I don't know what you would say long, 10 plus years, something like that. Never really liked animal products, right? Or only liked certain ones, more processed ones. That was always for me. I mean, I didn't really like it, like eating something off the bone. Ugh. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you would find that people who stay vegan longer tend to not care for animal products, at least as much. Maybe cheese, right? Everyone likes cheese. So that's it. I'm sure I'm going to get some angry people in the comments saying I don't really care about my kids' health or something like that. And, you know, we need to do everything we can to prevent anything. I mean, that's kind of what they say in the plant-based baby toddler book. Obviously, we won't do anything in our power to prevent something terrible. Again, we strap babies into death machines on a regular basis. You have to weigh the risks and the benefits. And again, for me, I don't want to kill fish so that my kid has a reduced risk for a fish allergy. Fish lives matter too, and that needs to be taken into consideration. But I would love to know what you guys think, particularly you vegan parents out there, particularly those of you who have older kids and you've gone through this. Did you introduce these allergens? Maybe you're pregnant and you're thinking about it or you've decided, are you going to introduce these allergens, milk and egg and fish? I would love to know. And you anti-vegans out there with children, do you regularly give them almond and walnut and sesame? Just curious. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you did enjoy this. I hope this was informative. Maybe it helped you make your own decision. I don't know. But yeah, thank you so much. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And that's it for me. Thank you again, guys. New video soon. Oh, and I do still have shirts. I got a comment that seemed to suggest that I don't know, someone thought they weren't around anymore. Walking chemical experiment in particular, they're still there. You can still get them if you want. And the totes and the coffee mug, I think that's it. So yeah, they're there. There's no like time limit. I don't do that shit. They're just there and they'll probably be there for a long time. So buy it whenever you want. <laughs> I'm a great salesman. I probably will do a sale for Christmas. I think I do that every year. I just do one. I, I don't like, like... That just happened to me with Vegan Essentials. I guess they're changing the site or something. But I swear to God, I've been getting an email every other day that's like, we have a sale for two days, 20% off. Two days later, hey guys, we have a sale, 25% off. What the, what? Again, it looks like they're changing the site and I guess they're trying to get rid of inventory or something. So that's a little bit different. But you guys know, like every single company does that where you'll get some sale and then like a month later, there's an even better one. I don't want to do that to y'all. So I do a sale once a year around Christmas time. I think I start like Black Friday or a week before and it's not for like a few days or anything. It's like for a whole month. So yeah, just a, a heads up. Thanks again. Bye.